let's think here about what Nietzsche is saying, about what Dostoevsky is saying, about the Siberian criminals whom he encountered. We talked about last week how in Siberian exile, he found that the criminals were very different, as Nietzsche said, from what he expected. Um, and what Dostoevsky thought was different about them um, was, first of all, that they still had a certain, they, they were capable of a certain humanity, um, and that they were not socialists, or at least um, the thing that gave them most consolation in their abjection was not socialism, but rather scripture in many cases. And so this was something that many, you know, ex-socialists kind of came up against was the fact that the, the so-called proletariat, the poor, the underclass, whatever you want to call it, um, actually was not the revolutionary class that Marx was always hoping would kind of rise up and uh, install this new post-religious utopia, but were often the most connected to the kind of primal, traditional, religious attitudes um, that had given them all that they had to hold on to in, this, in the teeth of this cold world, right? Um, that's what Dostoevsky kind of comes to realize in, in Siberia. Nietzsche, you'll notice, understands or thinks that uh, Dostoevsky has seen something quite different, which is the hardness uh, of the people that he's looking at. That is to say, their uh, their willingness or their ability, at least, uh, to grasp the nettle of life uh, in a way that the priests are not, right? Because priests have this kind of deceptive uh, dance of the seven veils that they do in order to uh, perpetuate certain power structures. And those who are hoodwinked by that dance are domesticated into these forms of morality that actually reduce their humanity, that make them less uh, than they could be, less than uh, at least the Ubermen will be, right? Um, and this is why the Corsican Napoleon, right, is the one who kind of uh, rises up and seizes the nettle of becoming truly the great man, uh, not by doing crimes in secret, but simply by doing what others would call crime in the open, and by doing them in the open, bringing forth uh, the first inkling of this new morality. Um, Dostoevsky, I believe, sees this impulse also in the criminal, in the same way that that uh, Nietzsche does. And that's why Raskolnikov is the person that he is. Um, and that's why Ivan talks the way that he does. Um, even though Ivan is, is not a murderer, right? Um, he will end up, uh, kind of holding himself guilty for murder in this interesting way that Dostoevsky also did. And that's something we'll get into at a later time, although I hinted at it before.